Number five, who is on the Lord's side? Can I continue? One who has chosen to be an active part of God's kingdom advancement agenda. One who has chosen to be an active part of God's kingdom advancement slash end time agenda. You can write it there. One who has chosen to be a part of God's kingdom advancement slash end time agenda. Isaiah chapter 6 and verse 8. One who has chosen to be a part of God's end time agenda. This was Isaiah the prophet going through his dealings with God. And he said, also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who shall go for us? Then Isaiah said, Here am I, send me. We use this for missionaries when we are looking for people to go to the mission field or to go to villages. It's not about missionaries alone. He's saying which vessel because I am God but I need human vessels who will avail themselves for my purposes to come to pass. And maybe I should just digress for a minute or two and teach you that the agenda of God, I have taught you this. When we talk about the project kingdom come or what we call kingdom advancement, can I define it for you? Kingdom advancement refers to, listen before you write, kingdom advancement refers to every Huh? and any scriptural mechanism that is deployed to enthrone Christ and his purposes first in the hearts of men then across every strata of human activities this is what we call kingdom advance so when you say you are advancing the kingdom it doesn't just mean you are preaching or it doesn't just mean you are giving money to church it is that every scriptural mechanism that can be deployed that ultimately leads to the enthroning of Christ in the hearts of men. Are we together now? And then seeing that Christ is enthroned across the strata of human activities. And to achieve that, God decided to make kingdom advance, which is the same thing with his end time agenda. The, the, the program is threefold. Number one, the first dimension of that kingdom agenda that you see is world evangelization that means saving the lost that is the first dimension it is in order of priority the most important but it's not the, on, the only the, the only program so world evangelization number two is the equipping of the saints this is the second program because the church is god's battle acts the equipping of the saints then number three the transformation of society are you seeing it now so world evangelization the equipping of the saints then the saints that are now equipped and empowered start transforming society that's where we talk of the seven mountains now the mountain of religion the mountain of family the mountain of education the mountain of arts and entertainment the mountain of media the mountain of uh, what else again finance all those mountains people who are sent as sheep among wolves so you talk of the professionals the architects you talk of the, the the doctors and lawyers the politicians all the witnesses generally but in order of priority societies at the mercy of the transformation of the church so the believer world evangelization unbelievers become believers discipleship and equipping the saints now turn new believers into matured believers people who are of stature and stamina who are empowered they are now sent equipped with understanding and they they penetrate systems and structures and they enthrone the purposes of christ maybe i should say a word or two about the concept of what we have come to know in the body of christ and i'm, I'm being respectful about this but i think it's good that since i'm speaking on this point of kingdom advance i understand a bit on this point and i submit to you that i think many preachers really do not understand the full import of what we call god's end time agenda we have all kinds of ideas and one of the most popular 
ideas is the concept of takeover. Maybe I should say a word about that. I've had it being used sincerely so, and, and there are people who know what they're saying. But um, listen to me, believers. When we talk about the idea of taking over systems and structures, let me tell you what we mean, and let me tell you what we do not mean. We do not mean magically that from a physical standpoint, that one day, you know, the West, the developed first world nation will suddenly, you know, Africa will magically just become like that. When we talk about takeover, it's a spiritual language. Listen, as far as territorial transformation is concerned, there are two things that God is interested in. Number one, the spirits of men. Second, their minds. Are we together now? The physical manifestation is a natural resultant effect of that. So when we are talking about taking over, we are not just talking about building industries alone and building houses and, you know, making Nigeria a modern Dubai. And no, 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 no. That, that, is, that, is, that is quite a mundane approach. The idea is the health of the spirits of men, then causing them to now sustain superior beliefs because the God of this world has an assignment to blind the minds of the people. Are we together now? I hope you know Jesus is coming soon. I doubt that we are going to live, perhaps, but I doubt that we are going to live maybe for the next 50 years or so. I really doubt. With the unfolding of events, so I'm not prophesying. And this is not a doctrine. It's just a discussion with my people. Are we together now? If you are together, say amen. amen. I really doubt because following the prophetic signposts that were given to us in scripture, we are already at the last phase of everything. That is the truth. This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached as a witness. What happened in UK, what is happening across the globe is a testament that we are nearing the end of the end. Do you believe what you're hearing? And there are many of us here, the idea we have is that God just brought you through your parents and now that you're an adult, probably married with children, we have no definition as to what we're doing with our lives. And we feel that the only way to just bribe God to feel we still remember him is to come to church. But there is nothing pro-kingdom in our lives. The entire circumference of our lives is about the pursuit of money and the pursuit of whatever it is. I recommend for such people my teaching, What Seekest Thou? Please write it and look for it. You'll find it on Koinonia Global and listen to it very carefully. There I teach on the concept of true fulfillment and we examine a few things that in, in our wild quest, as we wake up in the morning and sleep late in the night, sadly for many only to eat the bread of sorrow that there are so many things we are looking for listen there is an exact there are exact activities on earth that an individual must be engaged in to find fulfillment and the endless quest for financial resources was never supposed to be god's design for man that is that is uh, uh, and, and, uh, and i say this respectfully speaking it cannot be God's idea that the moment you become an adult, for the rest of your life, as long as you breathe, you're looking for money. And then I look for money, then build a house, then finally just find out to my surprise that I am old. And then in regret and anger, I now begin to do all kinds of things and then you pass on. That does not look like an intelligent God's God, uh, 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 God's, God's idea. God's idea is that we know him, access through the keys of the kingdom, the resources that make us to live excelling lives. Then they now grant us the comfort to face the matter of the kingdom. You do not have to be a preacher. This is not about preachers. Listen to my message, redefining the coming revival. Every one of us has a role to play. What you call your purpose is simply the role you have to play in that big picture. And you will never find true fulfillment until you find it. Lo, I come in the volume of the book 
it is written concerning me for some of you your singular assignment on earth is that God will lift you you will become so powerful financially and make significant contributions towards kingdom come your first assignment if that is your mandate is to understand the economic system of the kingdom and then engage it until you become truly wealthy and then get to work for some of you you're sent to the fivefold apostles prophets evangelists pastors teachers your assignment is to know God pass through a methodical mentorship go through your dealing with God and then begin to unfold your mandates as they come for some of you you are empowered by God to penetrate the systems and structures maybe through your career God wants you to rise to an executive position and there use your influence alongside the results that has come from your life to promote the cause of the kingdom your own assignment there will be now to excel to go for secular knowledge and press to the highest level that now grants you capacity but by all means you must find out the role that you have to play there is absolutely nobody here who does not have a part to play and like i have taught you if you do not play your part it's like a relay you know how a relay is when you are running someone is waiting to collect the baton and you delay another person's destiny imagine if our father in the lord baba deboye did not discover his place in life hallelujah is God speaking to someone who is on the Lord's side one who has chosen to be an active part of God's kingdom advancement agenda you can pray you can win souls you can make active contributions as a financial apostle you can excel in your career to attain onto a position of influence and use your influence like Daniel, use your influence like Joseph, use your influence like Esther. Listen, I want you to open this Bible and find where it is written concerning you. You will look at your life and you will find a parallel. If God has called you to be Esther, find Esther and study Esther. If God has called you to be John, find John. There will be a parallel of your assignment in scripture. When you find it, then be serious. If your assignment is Esther, make sure you, your, first, your first preparation is to be a good woman. So that when you get there, you will be able to support the program of God. If your assignment is Deborah, being good is not enough. You must understand the art of war. Because you are going to be a warrior. If you are Elijah, then you must master the art of prayer and the prophetic. If you are Daniel and you are praying alone, you are going to fail. Because what will exalt you is your excellence. Your prayer will be a personal affair that secures you. But what the nation will recognize you for is your intelligence and your excellence. An excellent spirit is what branded Daniel. Are we together? Let me give us the last one so we pray. Who is on the Lord's side? One who has chosen to walk in humility as a lifestyle. I like this. James 4, 6. Who is on the Lord's side? One who has chosen to walk in humility. Let's read it together. One, two, go. But he giveth more grace. Uh -huh. Wherefore he said, God resisted the proud. Ah. Look at me, ladies and gentlemen. What does it mean to resist? To resist means to push away. To stop from coming close or to stop from making progress. The Bible says that is what will happen to any man who decides to be proud. Let me give you a kind counsel. The moment God begins to lift you, whether financially or in business or in ministry, I want you to be intentional about being and remaining humble. One of the greatest ways to be and to remain on the Lord's side is humility. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. I know that the world has celebrated us over the 
historic feat that you know happened in 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 uk and we thank god for that we do not downplay that but i pray for you like i pray for myself that may success never enter you to a point that you forget that god is a doer of this say amen, amen. shout a loud amen. amen i'm praying for myself and i'm praying for our global family it's good to celebrate jesus and he will keep lifting us and doing so many things but ladies and gentlemen humility is powerful humility is a retainer of honor when you practice humility you retain your honor pride is one of the fastest ways of losing anything God gives you anything I don't care what it is There are many people today who cannot be trusted with anything from God. You know why? Because of this arrogance. I am a millionaire. I'm a billionaire. Now you can see it. My houses and my cars, we say. I'm a man of God, having global influence across the globe. Especially when you have results to show. If you are proud and you don't have results, you are a fool. That one is not even pride. That's foolishness. Are we together? But there's something called the pride of life. The pride of life is where you have obvious results. You know, people, you can't contest against results. Once you have your results like a report card, you now have the credence to be proud. But I'm praying for you again, that as he lifts you, as he blesses you, as he prospers you, as he announces you, may you by humility remain on the Lord's side. Watch this. The greatest miracle recorded in the Bible was Jesus' own resurrection from the dead. Not his raising others from the dead. His own rising from the dead by himself. And when Jesus rose up from the dead, I mean, you would think that Jesus should make news and blast it and drum it to everybody's head and go to the temple where he once flogged people and go everywhere. But as soon as he got up, you know where he went to? Straight he went to the disciples greeted them said touch my hands do this and that and they got to walk 40 more days he was teaching them because he was soon to leave finally the greatest enemy of great people is their current level of achievement now i'm not teaching you to downplay you see philemon 1 and verse 6 says that the communication of your faith might be effectual philemon 1 and 6 philemon 1 6 that the communication of your faith might be effectual through the acknowledging of every good thing that is in you in Christ Jesus. So it is not humility to refuse to acknowledge. If God has blessed you, he has blessed you. If you are doing a good job, you are doing a good job. There is nothing wrong in celebrating the hand of God. But humility is where all the praises come to you and you lift it up and take it up. All the glory belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you, oh God. That's the quality of true humility. All the glory belongs. All the glory belongs to you. Beyond Joshua Selman, beyond Koinonia. All the glory belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you. Hallelujah. So, when you receive a prophetic word here and God opens a door for you, you suddenly become a multi-millionaire, you become a billionaire. Remember, humility is the wisdom of great men. That's what keeps them. It's what brings longevity to your impact. You see, there is a natural temptation to want to rub it in. Where are all those who did not believe in me? Now that I'm a great man, let me slap it to your face. For No, 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 no. It's unnecessary. When Joseph became great, there was no need proving any point. If you are great, Ba, you are great. If God has given you this thing, he has given you. It's as simple as that. If you are rich, you are rich. If you are poor, uh, you can be rich. But, but at that point, of course, you are not... I'm, I'm, I'm trying to not speak negative but i'm just saying if god has given you he has given you it's as simple as that all this bragging and shouting and trying to raise doors and build a crown to yourself 
my greatest joy in all the announcement and by the way let me say thank you to all those who acknowledge what jesus did through us published it yonder i mean i'm not on social media but i heard the remarkable work my greatest joy is that jesus was glorified through that process unfortunately whether you like it or not to lift up jesus you are the one who is first lifted then if you are wise enough you now lift him above you and if he sees that you lift him above you if he wants to go higher how will he go higher by lifting you more you see how it works so don't be surprised when you are lifted i'm saying we because remember i taught you that everything that happens is not joshua selman i didn't go to uk we went to uk i didn't heal the sick god healed the sick through us and i mean what i'm saying your prayers your giving your sacrifice added to all that who is on the lord's side one who will choose in the midst of plenty and great in the midst of glitz and glamour in the midst of a celebrity life in the midst of global recognition to still remember to let your knees touch the ground to acknowledge that he is good for me i've made up my mind as a principle and as a covenant that for the rest of my life no matter where he leads me no matter what he does through my life it is an honor to serve his purposes for the many people my phone was full of so you can imagine and for for the few that i could respond to i would just tell them it's an honor and a privilege to be used by god hallelujah a life of humility Apostle, but we are, we are really proud in our family. Repent, repent. There's no such thing as that. Take the stage, Lord. Have your way. I'm just a vessel and nothing more. When you're done, done announcing us. Please take the glory. I'm satisfied just to see you glorified. Lay your hands on your head and cry for the grace for genuine humility. Please pray. Please pray. Please pray. Lord, work on my tendencies for being arrogant. It is, it is, it is resident within me. The Lord tested you with a little result, a dimension of the anointing. And arrogance will not even let you grow. I want you to pray. Please pray. Cry from your heart. No matter how much you lift me, it will be to your glory no matter how much you give me it will be to your glory no matter how much you announce me oh let the nations know that i'm only an ambassador let the nations know that we are only products of your mercy and grace go ahead and make that declaration
why he lifts you he lifts you so that he can be seen through you do not forget this whenever he lifts you hear me he lifts you so that he can be seen through you and don't just do a religious glory to God and your life is just suffering through pride when you are genuinely humble it, it shows There are many people who just say glory to God just to ease the guilt of looking proud. But all around, littered is the stench of pride. When you learn to decrease so that he will increase, the reward you get is that you are lifted higher so that you will lift him higher. I told you here, you've heard me and I'm speaking to a global family. Years ago, the Lord spoke to me and said, son, if you will let men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. For every one of the days after the conference, when I returned back, I just went to my room and knelt down and said, Lord, your boy is here. No matter what they say, let the nations clap. Thank you for the miracles. But this is the one you took from nothing and you have brought here. For the grace that you have given me I can never repay you but from my heart I'm saying Lord that I thank you For the wisdom you have given us we can never repay you, but from our hearts, we're saying, Lord, that I Hold the hands of someone close to you. We're wrapping up. Who is on the Lord's side? I've given you six keys. Number one. One who has genuinely submitted to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Number two, one who has submitted to the leadership of the Holy Spirit to guide you. You may look foolish, but like we always sing that when he holds your hands, we brought our tiny little hands full of ignorance and placed it over the hand of this great God. And he held that small hand and watch what he is doing with it never downplay the holy spirit he will take you to nations and he will not just produce wonders he will make your life an unending epistle it is true number three who is on the lord's side one who has chosen as an act of your will and by understanding to submit to the supremacy of the word that the word is exalted in your life above and beyond culture above and beyond status above and beyond whatever it is your sociological context the word of god has gained ascendance and supremacy your mind has become renewed and transformed even by the word who is on the lord's side for one who has made up his mind to live a consecrated life and a life of sacrifice a life that gives everything to him number six number five who is on the Lord's side the fifth person who is on the Lord's side is one who has made up his mind what's number five again one who has made up his mind to be an active part of God's program that for as long as I live the kingdom must find expression through me as God is looking for men there must be something that I do if I can't preach I will pray if I can't pray I will give in fact you should pray but I will give. I will use my profession. I will use my life. I will use my influence. I will use my resources. I will spend and be spent to see Jesus revealed to the nations. And finally, who is on the Lord's side? Number six, one who has chosen a choice to walk in humility as a lifestyle. Humility meaning that Jesus will always be seen intentionally so as the reason behind your results that as men celebrate you as men call you names they are free to do so 
because the glory goes to the Lord but the honor is to the saints so as he lifts you as he empowers you as he blesses you as he gives you visibility please do not forget this preacher's voice you will hear it in your dreams you will hear it when you are far away from me you may be far from me but be on the Lord's side use the weapon of humility don't be ashamed to get down on your knees and let the world know that you have been lifted by him that you are sustained by him they may say it's out of fashion it is fashionable to be the celebrity and you tell them he has blessed me enough and I'm I'm grateful he's kept the honor but let him take the glory hallelujah in one minute I'd like you to pray while holding hands pray these five into your life I don't know which of them you are and which of them you are not these six points I meant to say open your mouth and pray I want to be on the Lord's side perhaps when it has to do with salvation we can say you're on the Lord's side but when it has to do with consecration and sacrifice we may not say so for you perhaps when it has to do with humility we cannot say you're on the Lord's side I like you to use tonight's teaching to close that gap I truly desire to be on the Lord's side now and forever Allah sort of bracket the belly we have one minute cry to God on the Lord's side as a preacher on the Lord's side as a businessman on the Lord's side as a Nigerian on the Lord's side as a prestigious part of this global family hallelujah hallelujah keep your hands together I want to pray a prayer and then we're done Lord if you're healing someone in this nation don't do it without me don't do it without me Lord if you're lifting nations in this season don't do it without me oh Lord if you're blessing nations in this city family of faith and we declare that we remain ever available we thank you for showing us profound mercy you have singled us out as a people and you have chosen to honor us not just the week past you have invested your honor and your grace upon our lives and Lord we declare I declare on behalf of your people that we have chosen to be on the Lord's side in the name of Jesus Christ we declare that you grant unto us as individuals and as a ministry longevity of impact in the name of Jesus Christ and Lord we pray 
that everything that can become a distraction to our kingdom pursuit let it be far from us Amen. lord i'm praying for someone i'm praying for a family that may be discouraged right now it looks like you have not seen a performance of the word of god you have celebrated as a global family but individually you are yet to see certain results i agree with you because you are now determined to be on the lord's side may the power that is on the lord's side work for you may the wisdom that is on the lord's side work for you may the speed that is on the lord's side work for you may the immunity that is on the lord's side work for you may the restoration that is on the lord's side work for you in the name of jesus christ this week i declare over your life by the power that raised jesus from the dead return with results this will be a week of strange evidences in your life whatever it takes to be fruitful whatever it takes to be a worthy ambassador i empower you with it right now in jesus name and i rebuke the hand of satan over your life in the name of jesus christ that by tomorrow even up until next week you will return with strange testimonies i declare protection over you I declare preservation over you I command favor upon your life your prayer life will never go down your word study life will never go down supernatural revelation by the Spirit let the mantle of honor rest on you shame and reproach is far from your life you indeed will show yourself as a people that God has helped in the name of Jesus Christ Wave your hands to Jesus and give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God's word has come this far to reach out to you even to the ends of the earth. It's our desire that the word of the Lord gets to the uttermost parts of the earth. Stay tuned with us as we promise to bring you daily uploads, as we promise to also bring you inspiring, soul lifting teachings by the mouth of the Lord, by his servant Apostle Joshua Selman on Reflector Hub TV. We guarantee you that. God bless you.